So now that we've talked about the structure and functionality of the factory method pattern, let's take a look at the implementation. And this implementation is a really fun implementation. And it's uh, particularly fun because it demonstrates, once again, how patterns like to work together. So I'm going to show you how to implement the user command factory impl, which is the class that creates user commands. So it plays the sort of creator role in the pattern, and it makes products that, of course, are concrete products when you look at how they're actually created. So interestingly enough, we're going to apply the command pattern to implement the factory method pattern. And what's even more interesting about this, as we'll see, is we use the command pattern to implement the factory method pattern to create commands. So uh, I'll talk about that. It's, it's a very curious little Mobius strip-like recursive design approach with patterns. Here are some of the fields that are in the user command factory impl. We have this type def called factory ptmf for pointer to member function. And you can see what it is. It's a pointer to member function that takes a const string ref and returns a user command. And then we make ourselves a map that maps a string to a factory pointer to member function, ptmf. So it's basically going to map a string to a pointer to member function that will be defined in this class that knows how to create the corresponding command. And we put that into a map. So that's just a good old STL map. And remember that maps are containers that have to have non-duplicate keys. They must have unique keys. The keys, of course, are the commands. Here's the constructor. This is going to basically initialize the command map. And check out this implementation. It's so freaking cool. We say command map sub name of command, format, expert, macro, um, eval, you know, quit, whatever the commands are. And then we initialize the map with the corresponding pointer to member function for a private method in user command factory impl that implements the creation of that associated command. So, of course, the format string is associated with the make format command member function. The expert string is associated with the make expert command member function. So this is why I said it's kind of like a Mobius strip. We're using the command pattern to define a factory method that creates a command. So how cool is that? Let's now take a look at the, the factory method itself, the make command factory method, which takes a const string ref, and it uses the map to find and execute the command that makes the command. So first thing we do is we go ahead and take the input and we break it up and uh, go ahead and figure out what is the command keyword like expert or format or macro and then what parameter or parameters there are, if any, because that's part of the user input. Then we take the command keyword and we go look up in the map in order to find the associated key value binding that is related to that command keyword. And remember what comes back will be a pair. That's what the iterator type is. I made it an auto, but it's actually a pair. And it's going to be the name of the command, like format or expert. That's the first element in the pair. And the second element will be the pointer to member function that knows how to create an instance of that particular type. So we, we look it up. If we find it, in other words, if we don't get back the, the end iterator, we go and say, this arrow star iter dash second. Second is a pointer to member function. This will go ahead and call that pointer to member function, passing in the parameter or parameters. And so what we're doing there is we're calling the operation, passing in the parameters. And, and that would be one of those other commands. So notice we know how to make those commands. And I'll, I'll look at that code in more detail in a second. Um, otherwise, if we didn't actually give it a command it knew about, we give it a command like foobar or something nonsensical, it'll come back and, and just create the quit command, which will cause the program to shut itself down. So now that I've given you kind of a high level view, let's delve down and see how the actual implementation of the command pattern in C++ is done in the context of our expression tree. Uh, as always, we're implementing these things using the bridge pattern to encapsulate memory management. So we don't have to worry about memory leaking and so on. We use user command factory, which is the abstraction in the bridge pattern. 
And you can see here, we've got the make command method and make command is really the, the primary method used by clients. And then down here, you can see that we have the ref counted user command factory impl, and that's going to then delegate over to the appropriate user command factory impl subclass. So just a quick look over here, you can see that the uh, make command method goes ahead and delegates down to factory impl make command. So let's go ahead and take a look at factory impl. This is user command factory impl. You can see that it's got a bunch of virtual methods and um, these virtual methods are then going to be used to initialize this factory PTMF, which is a type def, which is defining the value part of the key value pair in our map called the command map. We have an instance of the command map here. And then if we go ahead and take a look at the implementation portion, you can see that um, what we're doing here is we're defining all these different methods. So uh, we have make eval command, make print command, make expert command, make forward command, format command. And all they're doing is they're saying, make me a new user command, which is the bridge encapsulation that we've already talked about when we talked about the command pattern and make it with the implementation being the format command or the expert command or the print command. Notice how that those details are hidden behind these nice abstract methods called make expert command, make print command, make eval command, and so on. And all of those objects, or sorry, all of those methods are then used down here in the constructor of user command factory impl to initialize the command map. So as we saw before, every one of these different commands is associated with the corresponding pointer to member function. And that's what's putting the value part in the key value pair in our command map. And then as we saw before, when make command is called, it goes ahead and looks up in the map, finds the corresponding command and, and executes it by calling the appropriate pre-registered pointer to member function. And then that pointer member function then will go ahead and call the appropriate method that it was pointing to, which will then go ahead and make the associated command. And notice how we, we encapsulate this so cleanly and so clearly so that the users never have to see any of this gobbledygook. They just focus on saying, make me a user command, make command, here's the string, and boom, we get back the right kind of command, which I think is just, uh, is just so awesome. Here, by the way, is the way we make a macro command just for fun. You can see we have a vector, and we go ahead and we push the elements back into that vector. And um, uh, that way, the macro command is making a format command with the in order uh, format type, make an expert command with the expert string that's passed in as a parameter, and then we make an eval command using post order as our evaluation order. And if you apply post order to the expression tree, you get the yield of the expression tree. So then we go ahead and make a user command with a new macro command that contains all these elements here. And, and there are other ways we could have done this. I, I could have used an initializer list. Uh, this is just a very simple way to do things. And what I want you to come away with from all this is a pattern for implementing factory methods. So you can use this pattern for your own purposes and in fact, later when we talk about some other things like our iterator factory, you'll see it uses the same pattern that we're applying here, which is very nice because it's very extensible. You can make changes, you can plop in new types of uh, commands. All you have to do is just add an entry in the map and associate it with the corresponding pointer to member function that will create an instance of that particular type of object.